I was a fuel oil dealer and a gasoline dealer for 20 years. And I can tell you that the large oil companies really don't care that much about us here in Maine. One of my best friends is a Maine Maritime graduate who, who is a captain on the largest oil tanker, one of the largest oil tankers in the world. And he said to me, look, we've got 50 years of oil. If you don't want, if the Americans don't want the oil, I will get a fax on my, over the bridge, and I will turn my boat, and we will head for China. We will head for India, because they're burning it faster than we are right now. So if we do these things, it will be good for our security, it will be good for our health, and it will be good for our economy. And that's what I'm talking about. I'll be glad to answer any questions, and please help me with my campaign. Thank you very much. You said you'd give me a bottle of water about an hour. I'm going to get it. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be back. Questions? Yes, sir. Um, you talked a lot about energy storage and um, ways that we can reduce peak hour, uh, reduce our reliance on peak hour production, stuff like that. Um, one very easy way of, of uh, power storage is through hydro dams. Yep. And that all that kinetic energy is stored and we release it when we need it. Um, Recently, there's been a big push to remove a lot of Maine's hydro dams, yes. and I would like to know your position on that. Um, let, me, let me say this about hydroelectricity in Maine and about nuclear power in Maine. Uh, I mentioned at the start of this conversation that we licensed 400 megawatts of wind in less than a year, and we will license another 400 megawatts in another year. Um, that is the equivalent of about what Maine Yankee was, the last nuclear power plant that we had in Maine. I, the first committee that I ever served on was the decommissioning of Maine Yankee, which was to, uh, after the decision had been made by the owners and others to shut down the plant, we were to set up the system that would monitor and make sure that the waste was stored correctly and that would help institute a plan through utility regulation to pay for it. Maine Yankee was the cheapest electricity at the time. It has it, it now, since the closure of it, become the most expensive electricity Maine consumers ever purchased. That said, may, uh, there are people who will be providing us nuclear power from New Brunswick or some of the other places that will be very reasonable, but maybe we won't have the burden of owning that. Same thing with hydroelectric dams. It will take 10 to 20 years, like a nuclear power plant, to license because of people who want wild rivers flowing. And I'm a big advocate for flowing wild rivers. I've canoed every, almost every river in the state. But the fact is, is that we can't, get, we can't wait for our energy needs to go through regulatory licensing that will take two decades to do it. We have another solution. It's biomass, it's renewables, and it's purchase of power that's already being licensed in another place that needs to come through our borders. And I think that's, that's the issue. We're not going to license a dam uh, on the smallest of rivers in the state of Maine without a huge burden and, and 20 years of regulatory process. Yes, sir. I think you kind of identified it. Will you try to cut that burden away so that we can have progress for people who are wanting to invest in Maine and create alternative energy resources? Well, that that's part of what we did with the Wind Power Task Force was we, that we put a zone of, of places that we would expedite the licensing and there were places that we wouldn't build it at all. We, we won't build it on the high mountains, we won't build it on Mount Katahdin, we won't build it on our pristine shorelines or, or on the lakes of, of, of and I think we've, we've wrongly cited, thank you Tom, I think we've wrongly cited uh, some wind power sites already. Um, I have a very good friend who is a great school teacher who lives in a home when the sun comes up and the sun shines through the wind blades, it looks like a discotheque from the 70s in his home. All of the flicker. And that was pro improperly cited. So we need to make sure that we use the model that works so that people won't oppose it and they won't fight clean, renewable energy, which I think is, is a big part of our future. But what about with nuclear and hydro, though? Um, I, I would never advocate to build a nuclear power plant in Maine. I think I would be just as well off to go up and pound my head against that cement wall for a couple of days. <laughs> because I think that it, it will, number one, it takes 10 to 20 years to build one, and then you still have problems with long-term storage. Now, that stated, New, New Brunswick Power has just expanded their own nuclear power plant up there. They're going to have to deal with the solid waste storage. I think we should talk to them about purchasing some of that electricity if we can buy it cheap. 
and, and offer it to our industries as, as uh, uh, when we talk to the paper industry, when I, I, I met with most of those mill owners to tell, talk about my Great Maine Forest uh, initiative, places where Tom has been involved with for years in the paper industry, they never say, we don't like the labor in Maine. They never say, we don't like the fiber in Maine. What they say is, we have a problem accessing the fiber and the energy costs are too high. So we need to deal with that, and we can deal with that. Yes? Given the assumption that costs of oil will continue to, or oil and gas will continue to rise in the state of Maine, what solutions um, do you have for fixing the state's highway fund? The state's highway fund? Well, I mean, I think that, that we have, we, we bonded a lot of money for the highway fund. A lot of our highway fund issues are federal issues, um, yet we do have to deal with it on a state level. We do have, we'll, we will have to adjust the highway fund if they don't do it this year in the legislature. Um, but the fact is, is that we have twice as many miles of roads as New Hampshire, and we get about 20% more than they do in federal funds. So they need to take care of this huge network of, help us take care of this huge network of roads. And again, uh, we'll, we'll have to address electric cars, we'll have to addr address uh, hybrid cars, and, uh, and I think, uh, you know, we, we, we've got to look at the, it's a, it's a model that was made 50 years ago, much like our tax system. 